In 1934, when Walt Disney announced plans to make the first American animated feature, Hollywood nicknamed the work in progress Disney's Folly and said audiences would never accept a full-length cartoon feature. They ate their words when Snow White became the biggest hit of 1937, though it was based on the grimmiest of Grimm's fairy tales. Hi, I'm Frank with Channel Frederator, and while Snow White kept more of the original creepiness than other Disney tales, there's more freaky details that Walt left out. So today we're going to whistle while we work out the Disney dark secrets behind Snow White. One Tough Mother The fairy tale opens in winter, with Snow White's mom sewing by a window. After stabbing her finger with a needle, she finds blood on the snow and thinks it looks beautiful enough to say, If I only had a child as white as snow, as red as blood, as black as the wood in this frame. Despite not stating preference of what would be where, Snow White is born with white skin, red lips, and black hair. Her mother immediately dies after having her, at least in Grimm's second rewrite. Originally, in the first one, the wicked stepmother wasn't a stepmother at all. Snow White's own mom was the one that was so torn up with jealousy over her daughter's looks that she wanted her dead. The Grimm's switched it with the second printing, as fairy tales and Disney have a long history of wicked stepmothers. While the Queen forces Snow White to work as a scullery maid in the movie, Movie, which keeps her filthy and in second place in the mirror's fairiest of them all rankings, for once the original fairy tale goes easier. Snow White just gets prettier and prettier and prettier until the queen just can't take it anymore. Age ain't nothing but a number. About that. While movie Snow White is 14 years old, the grim story states that when she was 7 years old, she was as beautiful as the light of day, and even more beautiful than the queen herself. Seven. Let me repeat that. Seven! Sure, some time probably elapsed between her seventh birthday and the one day the Queen receives the verdict of Snow White being the fairest in all the land, but that still puts Snow White at best around 11, when the Queen decides to nip her beauty competition in the bud. To be fair, this is historically accurate. Beauty ideals of the era focused on maidenhood, a loosely defined time when, to quote a certain pop songstress, you're not a girl, not yet a woman. Still, the Queen wants to murder the medieval equivalent of a fourth grader for being too pretty. If she just waited a few more years, acting would have taken care of everything. Less singing, more stabbing. In the movie, Snow White's charming serenade with a handsome prince sets the queen off to a murderous rage. In Grimm's fairy tale, the Grimm's fairy tale is way too more stone cold. There's no particular reason. The queen just thinks it's time to put Snow White on ice. The queen summons her huntsman to bring Snow White deep into the woods and kill her. Instead of telling her to plop Snow White's heart into a beautiful jewel box, the fairy tale queen demands Snow's liver and lungs. And not just as proof. When the huntsman gets back, she has her chef boil them up with salt, sits down, and eats them. So she thinks. More on that later. Now, this is throwing some medieval shade. In medieval hunts, there were special ceremonies performed after the kill. The first was a ritual of unmaking. Parts of the animal were given to different party members in order of rank and honor. After that came curé. Various innards, including the liver and lungs, were chopped up and mixed with blood and bread. The mix was then fed to the hounds who the ceremony was rewarding. That's right, the queen's ranking is dog level when it comes to her plate. Cute and cuddly, they ain't. So hi-ho, hi-ho, off into the dark German forest the huntsman goes to stab Snow White. After begging for her life, the woodsman lets her go, and a smile and song enters his heart. Not because he spared an innocent, but because he wouldn't have to kill her directly. The wild animals will soon devour you anyway, are his exact thoughts as he skips off to murder a boar and fool the queen. So that's what she really ate, and it wasn't her innocence that convinced him, but her beauty. Again, this is someone in the 7 to 12 year old range we're talking about. Snow White runs terrified through the woods, and instead of friendly deer and birds hopping to her aid, wild animals jump at her, though they did her no harm physically, at least. Psychologically, the poor kid was terrified. She runs into the first house she sees. Hi-ho, let's go. Forget whistling while she works. In this version of the story, the dwarfs are total neat freaks. No need to clean like in the movie. Every plate and fork is neatly laid out. Every bed is perfectly made with sparkling white sheets, and there's no helpful animal in sight. Snow White is starving after her terrifying run, so she walks around nibbling a little bit from each plate and sipping wine from each mug. Somehow the underage drink Thinking didn't make it into the Disney version. Hmm. She pulls a Goldilocks and tries each one until she finds that seventh one is just right and knocks out. 
Meanwhile, the dwarfs march home from a hard day in the mines. We never learn their individual names or personalities, like we do in the movie. They're just a group of seven small men hanging out in the woods. No big deal. But unlike their movie counterparts who are pretty messy, which is why the movie Snow White ends up cleaning up their mess and knocking out after, these Grimm's dwarves are actually ultra neat. And because of it, the moment they walk through the door, they immediately notice things are slightly out of place. Hmm, OCD much? The chair, the plate, the vegetables, the fork, the knife, the mug, the bed. Yikes! They take time to examine about each and every item until they come across a large lady in the last bed. Just like everybody else, they're in awe of Snow White's beauty. So much so that they let her go right on sleeping. Their solution to being one bed short? The seventh dwarf spends an hour in each bed and hops into the next one. This seems widely inconvenient and a recipe for a bad night's sleep, but that's how the dwarves pass the night. In the film, however, they know someone is in their house because they see a light on in their house, and they believe it's a monster. When they finally see her in their bed, she wakes up right away. In both versions, when she wakes up surrounded by seven small men, Snow White is understandably frightened. However, after she tells them her name in the Grimm story, they're all friends. Sealing the deal is the dwarfs offer to let her bestow her full domestic servitude to them. Snow White jumps at the chance, saying, with all my heart. Maybe for a princess whose entire life consisted of sitting around looking pretty, housekeeping seems like a fun change of pace. In the film, she tells them she is the princess, which is why they are pleasantly surprised, except for Grumpy, of course. She guesses all their names according to what is written on their beds. She then begs them not to send her away, because the queen is looking for her and they all become frightened. Grumpy argues that they should make her leave before the queen finds out where she is and bestows her black magic on all of them. The dwarves finally agree to let her stay there in hiding, especially after she offers to cook and clean for them. Yet in the movie, it's Snow White that offers to be their servant. The dwarves love the idea of some good home cooking and agree, except for Grumpy, of course. I'm wishing you wouldn't try to murder me so much. The dwarves head off to work the mines, leaving Snow White alone in the tiny cottage. No kisses on the forehead like in the movie, just asking Snow to have dinner hot and ready when they return. They warn Snow White that her stepmom's bound to figure out she's not dead and to not let anyone in. Emphasis on anyone. Sure enough, the Wicked Queen asks the mirror the usual. The mirror completely snitches, letting her know Snow White's alive and hanging out in the woods with dwarves. The mirror rubs salt in the wound by declaring Snow's a thousand times prettier than the Queen. This is pretty much the way it happens in the movie, except without the thousand times prettier comment to rub it in. The mirror in the movie ends up telling the Queen that the heart she holds in her hand is the heart of a pig, and the Queen realizes that she's been tricked. In the Grimm's tale, the Queen so enraged that Snow White's still number one, and also alive, that she completely forgets to have the huntsman killed for his insolence and starts spitballing murder plans. The queen tries three times to kill Snow White herself. While in the movie, it's just once. Guess Disney didn't have much time to spare. Anyway, first shot out of the gate, the queen puts aside magic for hands-on murder. Disguising herself as an old woman, she sits in the forest and hangs outside the cottage, offering bodice laces for sale. This is a little off. Bonuses didn't really come into fashion until the 16th century, though dresses were fitted with laces on the side and front. Don't ask for historical accuracy with a story with sentient mirrors, I guess. Peddlers are the closest to malls Snow White's gonna get, so she pops her head out and eyes the goods. Thinking, this lady looks cool, she unbolts the cottage door. After Snow buys one, the queen offers to lace her up. She pulls so tightly that Snow White can't breathe. And in a line worthy of Gossip Girl, she says, you used to be the prettiest one, as she hustles away. When the dwarves come home, they think Snow White is dead, until they lift her and realize she's bow constricted by her bodens. They cut it off, and Snow slowly comes back to life. The dwarves say this must have been the work of the goddess queen, and once again, they warn Snow White not to let anyone in while they're away. Round two. Realizing Snow White's still alive, the queen cracks her knuckles and decides it's time for witchcraft. Now you might think, if she knew witchcraft, why didn't she just transform herself into a prettier lady? Which Witchcraft here specifically implies to poisoning. The queen's been using makeup for disguises. But then again, this was an era where pretty much anything a woman did was considered witchcraft. Anyway, the queen whips up a poisoned comb and disguises herself as a different old woman. Look, there weren't many options for peddler looks. She heads back to the college, where, to Snow White's credit, she tells the disguised queen to get lost. No one's coming in. The queen holds up the comb which must have been the hair equivalent of a Kylie lip kit, because the second Snow spots it, she's got to have it. Peddler says she'll show Snow how to comb her hair properly. Two seconds later, 
Boom! Death by styling. Fortunately, the dwarves arrive home, pull out the comb, and Snow White immediately comes to, giving a very confusing idea of how the witch's poisons work. Yet again, they tell her not to let anyone in. Anyone! Because it's a lonely forest, and so far the only people who've shown up are Snow White and disguised versions of a Wicked Queen. Third time's the charm, with the murder attempt we know from Disney, swearing she'll kill Snow White or die trying. The queen scuttles into her most secret room and whips up an apple so scrumptious looking no one can resist it. It's also extremely poisoned. It's white with red cheeks, which to me sounds less tasty and more like a freakish genetic experiment. Perhaps that's why Disney just went with a nice red apple, a little more scrumptious looking. This time the queen shakes things up and disguises herself as a peasant woman. With absolutely no warning or discouragement from animal pals like in the film, the queen knocks on the door of the cottage. Snow sticks her head out of the window and basically says, no dice. She's not letting anyone in or taking anything. The queen planned for this and says if Snow's worried about poison, check this out. She'll eat the white part and Snow can have the red. See? Totally not poisoned! Snow White takes a tiny bite of the poisoned half and drops dead. The queen absolutely does not die in an epic chase as we see in the movie, but instead heads home cackling and revels and finally ranking number one beauty in all the land. Don't worry, if you thought Disney's crushed by a boulder and eaten by vultures villainous end was bad, the Grimm's brothers do one better. More on that later. Someday my prince will come and check out my corpse. The dwarves come home and find Snow White oft. They look for combs, undo her laces, and wash her in water and wine. Yes, wine. Nothing works. The kid remains dead. They lay her out on a bier and mourn for three days. The dwarves can't bring themselves to bury someone who still looks so beautiful. So they build a glass coffin, inscribe her name and princess rank in gold, and park it on a nearby mountain. One dwarf is always on coffin watch, and now the animals come to represent. Too little too late, guys. First a now, then a raven, and finally a dove mourn, as Snow's coffin sits there a long, long time. This is the same way it happens in the movie, except it's actually explained through text verses actually seeing them do it. We see the dwarves all come to lay flowers by her coffin, and the animals come to pay their respects too. The part that differs is the explanation that the prince had searched far and wide, and heard of the maiden who slept in the glass coffin. In the Grimm story, a prince wanders through the forest and seeks shelter at the dwarf's cottage. This is the prince's first appearance in this story. No meet cute sing-along as in the Disney story. He just shows up and falls in love at first sight with Snow White's dead body. Yikes! The prince begs the dwarfs to sell him the coffin, and they won't, at any price. He switches tactics and asks they give it to him, as I will honor her and respect her as my most cherished one. His most cherished completely dead one. The dwarfs realize they've met someone even crazier than them about worshipping a body, and give him the coffin. It isn't love's first kiss that saves Snow, but clumsiness. As the prince's servants pick up the coffin, one of them stumbles, shaking the coffin and knocking the poison apple bite out of Snow White's mouth. That's the cleanup version in the second printing. Originally, one of the servants, sore about having to carry a glass coffin wherever the prince went, opens it and slaps Snow in the face, knocking out the bite of poisoned apple. Either way, Snow White wakes up moments later, beautiful and clueless as ever, asking who this guy is. And where is she? The prince tells her that he loves her so much that she's going to be his wife. Snow White's all, okay, sure, and the two plan a royal wedding with great splendor and majesty. In the film, he just walks up to the coffin, kisses her, and bows his head in sadness. Then she wakes up, and all's well and happy, cause life is that easy. He carries her off, puts her on his horse, and she gives each dwarf a kiss goodbye before they leave. Then the story tells us that they live happily ever after. Boom! Done. Happily ever after. Some torture. But not done in the Grimm's tale. In a power move, the couple invite the Wicked Queen to their feast. Before she steps out the door, the Queen checks out how hard her outfit slays, asking the mirror, who's the fairest in all the land? Oops, turns out Snow White's back in top ranking. The queen understandably freaks out, but Envy calls, and she just has to see what Snow White looks like. When she finally spots her, the queen freezes in terror, which gives plenty of time to heat up some iron shoes and burning coals. They put the piping hot shoes before the queen, force her to step into them, and make her dance until she falls down dead. Which makes some sense, it is a wedding party after all. And that's the original Snow White. 
those grim boys sure earn their name. I'm Frank and thanks again for watching Disney's Dark Secrets, Snow White. Which was the darkest secret? Think it's creepy Snow White's wedding present was watching her stepmom die? Comment below and let us know what you want us to cover next. Don't forget to click on the bell icon and become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe because Frederator loves you.